Hey, Brian Miller here, and welcome to Audio for Content Creators, where we help you sound better and level up for all your content creation needs. I'll get right into it. This video is an entire lesson from my brand new premium online course, Podcasting for Professionals, a course all about how professionals can leverage a podcast to increase brand awareness, to build an audience, to get their message out there into the world. It's not for amateurs. It's not for people who just want to start a passion podcast. They already have a very, very cheap course uh, for that, which is a seven days, uh, launch your podcast in seven days, an accelerator course. No, this is, this is a premium course. It is expensive. It's for serious professionals who want to use a podcast as part of their work. And this lesson uh, that you're going to see here is all about how the room affects the tone of a microphone, affects how your recording sounds. So it's just a way for you to get your head around why if you have a microphone and it doesn't sound as good as all the reviewers that you've seen of it and all the demos that you've seen on YouTube, it might not be the microphone. In fact, it's probably not the microphone. It's almost definitely the room that you're in. So go ahead and watch this lesson uh, from the behind the paywall of podcasting for professionals. For more information about the course, go ahead and check the description below or the top comment. Uh, it just launched yesterday as of uh, this video. Actually, no, it just launched today. I stand corrected. The course is open officially today. And there's some info down below about how if you're in the first 10 awesome people that sign up, you can get a huge $200 discount and a free one-on-one -on -one podcast development session with me. So enjoy this lesson. Hope you found it useful and uh, thanks so much. And now take a listen to this series of samples with the same microphone in different rooms in my house, demonstrating how a different room will completely impact how the microphone sounds. This is how a dynamic mic sounds in a professionally treated home studio. This is how a dynamic mic sounds in a professionally treated home studio. This is what a dynamic microphone sounds like in a master bedroom with normal household decor. This is what a dynamic microphone sounds like in a master bedroom with normal household decor. This is what a dynamic microphone sounds like in a totally untreated room, like a dining room or a spare bedroom. This is what a dynamic microphone sounds like in a totally untreated room, like a dining room or a spare bedroom. This is how a large diaphragm condenser microphone sounds in a professionally treated home studio. This is how a large diaphragm condenser microphone sounds in a professionally treated home studio. This is how a large diaphragm condenser microphone sounds in a master bedroom with normal household decor. This is what a large diaphragm condenser microphone sounds in a master bedroom with normal household decor. This is what a large diaphragm condenser microphone sounds like in a totally untreated room, like a dining room or a spare bedroom. This is what a large diaphragm condenser microphone sounds like in a totally untreated room, like a dining room or a spare bedroom. All right, so what's going on there? Why does the same mic sound completely different in different rooms? Well. There's actually a lot of things going on there. It's actually kind of like, it's like the whole thing. Just like how in a different earlier lesson, we talked about how the audio interface or the preamp can completely change the sound of a mic. Well, the room itself is probably the number one factor in how a mic sounds. Uh, you can take a really expensive $3,000 microphone and put it into an untreated echoey room and it'll sound like an untreated echoey room. But if you take a $50 budget USB mic and put it in a really well-treated room, it'll sound pretty good. It might even sound amazing because the room itself determines what the microphone's picking up. Don't forget, microphones are designed to pick up sound. And so if the room sounds echoey and you have a microphone in there, it's going to pick up the sound of an echoey room. Now, the beauty of getting to choose dynamic versus condenser is that a dynamic mic will pick up less of that echo if you're really close to the mic, whereas a condenser will pick up everything. And that's because dynamic microphones, by and large, are less accurate, right? Condenser microphones mostly accurately represent what's in the room. They're so detailed, you can actually hear what the real place that the recording took place in sounds like, but dynamic microphones kind of smooth over everything like a filter. And so generally, that's why we've said if you're in an untreated or a poorly treated room, you're better off with a dynamic mic. It's not going to sound realistic, 
but it'll sound better than accurately capturing an untreated room, which is why, contrary to what you would expect, a lot of better mics sound worse for most people because most people aren't in well-treated rooms. Okay, rant over. We need to talk though about specifically why these differences between rooms are happening. Well, there's two major things going on here. The first is the acoustic absorption, the sound absorption in that room. So what do I mean by absorption? Well, audio frequencies travel throughout the room, right? So when I speak right now, there's sound waves that are bouncing all around this room from my voice. And what they're doing is they're bouncing off of reflective surfaces. So some surfaces reflect sound, other surfaces absorb sound. So for instance, this purple thing back here, that is a big four inch thick acoustic treatment panel. That is designed to absorb sound. Whereas the wall of your bedroom, if there's nothing on it, is going to reflect sound. It's going to bounce it around. And the problem with home studios is that they're typically built in rooms that have parallel walls and parallel ceilings and floors, which means the, uh, the, 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 the sound waves are bouncing back and forth against parallel surfaces, which creates phasing when two of the identical waveforms kind of collide with each other at slightly different times. It's a very audible sound once you know what you're listening for. And, and so we've got our first issue, which is most situations that the, uh, the average podcaster is recording in is not a professionally treated studio, but a home bedroom or a home office or a living room or a dining room where we have all these reflections that create an echoey reverb-like sound. And that's probably the number one thing you've noticed in your own recordings if you've been frustrated by, um, especially if you've watched like one of, you know, a review, a microphone review from someone like me who's reviewing it in a well-treated, professionally treated room. And then you get it into your house and you're like, I, 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 how did it sound so good when that guy reviewed it on YouTube? But in my, what now that I'm using, am I doing it wrong? No, you're not doing it wrong. The microphone is the same microphone I was using, but you are in a bedroom with, you know, empty walls and the sounds bouncing around everywhere. Maybe you got hardwood floors and a glass table and there's all these reflective surfaces, whereas I'm in a professionally treated studio. So I don't have anything reflecting around. So that's the first issue. The second issue is bass buildup. The, the, the first thing I notice in a lot of home recordings and a lot of amateur recordings is that there's a huge amount of low end buildup. And there's a couple of reasons for this. One is again, in a non treated space, a lot of the services that do absorb frequencies only absorb high frequencies. So for example, if you have a, um, a lot of times you'll see advice like to hang a blanket up or hang a comforter up on the walls, right? To, 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 to cut down on, on the echo, on the reflections. Well, that's good advice on a budget to cut down on reflections. But what you're doing without realizing it is you're also sucking up the high range frequencies. See, if you have like a blanket that's only this thick, it is going to absorb some frequencies, but the frequencies it absorbs are high range frequencies, really high pitched stuff. Why? Because sound has size. We don't think of it like that, but it does. Really high pitched frequencies, they're very, very thin waves. They're very small waves. And so all you need is thin material to absorb them. But really low frequencies have huge sound waves. And the bigger the sound wave, the lower the frequency, the bigger the sound wave, the bigger, the thicker you need the absorption material to capture it. So that's why bass traps are a huge thing that you hear about for doing studio treatment. What they're designed to do is there's these massive, really, really heavy um, absorbing uh, material that is designed to suck up those low frequencies. So back to the point. What happens when you hang up all of those blankets and comforters, or if you're, you know, if you're in a room with uh, with a, you know, kind of bookshelves and things that are really good for, for getting rid of some of the echo, some of the reflections, without realizing it, what you're doing is sucking up all of the high range frequencies, maybe some of the mid range, but you're not sucking up any of the low range. And what that means 
is that you're only letting all of the low frequencies into your microphone and all the mid and high range frequencies have been sucked up. So what you get is a very boomy, very low focused recording. That's the first issue. But the second issue here, uh, the second issue of the second topic, the first topic was echo reflections. Now we're on the second topic. That was the first issue with the second topic. The second issue with the second topic regarding low range frequency buildup is that you're probably not listening on something that lets you hear those low range frequencies. So by and large, folks running podcasts at home doing content creation are listening on their laptop speakers, right? They're, maybe you're editing on your laptop speakers or your phone speaker. Maybe you're editing on a cheap pair of earbuds, or maybe you have some, you know, cool computer speakers, but they have three inch speakers. Um, none of those things can actually reproduce frequencies below 60 or 70 Hertz usually. And what happens is you get all this low frequency buildup without realizing it, and you're listening on something that can't even produce those frequencies, which means you can't even hear it when you're doing your editing. So you don't notice you're capturing it and you don't notice it's there when you're editing it. And so a lot of times when I hear these terrible sounding audio recordings, if I were to say to the creator, hey, these sound terrible, there's all this low frequency buildup, they would say to me, what are you talking about? No, there's not, I'm listening right? But you're listening on something that doesn't even produce it. So you can't hear it. Couldn't hear it if you wanted to. You would have to trust me or know how to see it in frequency analyzers. And that's, a, that's something we're going to talk about later in this course.